Well, I have to ask about education here. This is uh, this has been a stressful time for high school teachers, <laughs> teachers in general. How do you think large language models, even at their current state, are going to change education? First of all, education is the way out of poverty. Education is the way to success. Education is what let my parents escape, you know, islands and sort of let their kids come to MIT. And this is a basic human right. Like we should basically get extraordinarily better at identifying talent across the world and give that talent opportunities. So we need to nurture the nature. We need to nurture the talent across the world. And there's so many incredibly talented kids who are just sitting in underprivileged places in you know, Africa, in Latin America, in the middle of America, in Asia, all over the world. We need to give these kids a chance. AI might be a way to do that by sort of democratizing education, by giving extraordinarily good teachers who are malleable, who are adaptable to every kid's specific needs, who are able to give the incredibly talented kid something that they struggle with rather than education for all, we teach to the top and we let the bottom behind or we teach to the bottom and we let the top you know, drift off. Have you know, education be tuned to the unique talents of each person. Some people might be incredibly talented at math or in physics, others in poetry, in literature, in art, in you know, sports, in you know, uh, you name it. So I think AI can be transformative for the human race if we basically allow education to sort of be pervasively altered. I also think that humans thrive on diversity, basically saying, oh, you're extraordinarily good at math. We don't need to teach math to you. We're just gonna teach you history now. Mm -hmm. I think that's silly. No, you're extraordinarily good at math. Let's make you even better at math because we're not all gonna be growing our own chicken and hunting our own pigs or whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, you know, the reason why we're society is because some people are better at some things and they're, they have natural inclinations to some things. Some things fulfill them, some things they're very good at, sometimes both align and they're very good at the things that fulfill them. We should just like push them to the limits of human capabilities for those. And, um, you know, if some people excel in math, just like challenge them. I think every, every child should have the right to be challenged. And if we, you know, if we say, oh, you're very good already, so we're not gonna bother with you, we're taking away that fundamental right to be challenged. Mm -hmm. Because if a kid is not challenged at school, they're gonna hate school and they're gonna be like dwindling rather than sort of pushing themselves. So that's sort of the education component. The other impact that AI can have is maybe we don't need everyone to be an extraordinarily good programmer. Maybe we need better general thinkers. And the push that we've had towards these sort of very strict IQ based, you know, uh, tests that basically test, you know, only quantitative skills and programming skills and math skills and physics skills. Maybe we don't need those anymore. Maybe AI will be very good at those. Maybe what we should be training is general thinkers. And yes, you know, like, you know, I put my kids through Russian math. Why do I do that? Because it teaches them how to think. And that's what I tell my kids. I'm like, you know, AI can compute for you. You don't need that. But what you need is learn how to think. And that's why you're here. And I think challenging students with more complex problems, with more multidimensional problems, with more logical problems, I think is sort of perhaps a very fine direction that education can go towards with the understanding that a lot of the traditionally, you know, scientific uh, disciplines perhaps will be more easily solved by the AI. And sort of thinking about bringing up our kids to be productive, to be contributing to society, rather than to only have a job because we prohibited AI from having those jobs, I think is the, the way to the future. And if you sort of focus on overall productivity, then let the AIs come in, let everybody become more productive. What I told my students is, you're not gonna be replaced by AI, but you're gonna be replaced by people who use AI in your job. <laughs> so embrace it, use it as your partner and work with it rather than sort of forbid it. Because I think the productivity gains will actually lead 
to a better society. And that's something that humans have been traditionally very bad at. Every productivity gain has led to more inequality. And I'm hoping that we can do, be we can do better this time. That basically right now, a democratization of these types of productivity gains will hopefully come with better sort of humanity level um, improvements in, in, in human condition.